You know, I don't have high blood pressure, but I might need someone's BP medication after that game because I could possibly have it now. Caps win 5-4 to four over the New York Rangers and well, 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 well. Turns out when you're able to shut down Mika Zibanejad, you're able to win games against the New York Rangers, but uh, even still, this was not a comfortable game to watch. It was a very comfortable 50 minutes. 50 minutes of this game was fantastic. I was giddy as a schoolgirl, just ooh. But then, uh, then we started seeing some trends come back that we've seen from the Caps in the past couple weeks. And it's just, it's not a good feeling to sit there and watch your team completely give up every sort of lead that they've gained over 50 minutes and have it come down to just seconds, nail biting, just, you're waiting for it. You are absolutely waiting for that puck to go in and that game to be tied and this to go to overtime. Thank God we were able to avoid that this time. Just why? Like, why does it always have to be that way? Well, guess what? I know why. The Caps have a bad habit and this dates back, I've said this previously, this goes back before Peter Laviolette. This actually goes back to the Trotz era and I actually believe before Trotz, okay, well that was Adam Oates and that didn't go too well, but definitely in the Trotz era, the Caps, love playing a 1-4 prevent game when they have the lead in the third period. I've said this before, and we've talked about it, and we've analyzed it, and we've gone over it many, many times, and it still is a thing, and I still completely disagree about that strategy being implemented with this team. Okay, for all of you who don't know what a 1-4 prevent system is, here we go. A 1-4 prevent is when you have one four checker going into the offensive zone when the opposition has the puck. So the opposition is behind their own net or they're cycling back to their defense to set up a stretch pass or come to the neutral, whatever. Opposition has the puck, you send one forward in to put pressure on them to force your opponent to move the puck. Then the other four members of your team on the ice at that time, they stack your defensive blue line. One, two, three, four. They just sit there waiting for the puck to come into the zone. The goal here is, is that you've clogged up that blue line enough to prevent clean entry into the zone. It forces either turnover or it forces the opposition to chip the puck in past you and have to win the board battle in order to sustain any sort of pressure. This worked well in the Trotz era. The Trotz era caps were very, very responsible defensively. It was something that Trotz was very adamant from his first year of instilling in the team of responsible defense and an offense from defense mentality. However, the team right now is a lot more high octane than the team was in 2014 to 2018. Great analogy was posted me. The, the, the analogy of the 1-4 prevent with this team is like driving a Ferrari backwards through your city. You got all this power and you're just, you're confining it just to this little, little bit that it's capable of doing. And that's what this team is. You're playing a 1-4 prevent is like having all these possibilities of all this high octane offense and just pressure. And you're just sitting back and you're only using this much of it. It can work. It. I just said it did work in the Trotz era because the Trotz era caps were much more responsible defensively. But this team, it doesn't quite work. And the reason it doesn't work is because when you do a 1-4 prevent, you completely give up the neutral zone. The neutral zone, if you watch the first two periods and actually first 50 minutes of this game, the neutral zone is completely clogged up by the Caps. They put pressure on the puck moving through the neutral zone and that creates either turnovers or chip and chase or it just, it doesn't allow the Rangers to get into the zone cleanly and doesn't give up a lot of good shots. We, they only prevented uh, they they held the Rangers to 20 shots this game. That's They prevented chances very, very well by clogging up the neutral zone, but a majority of those shots came in the last 10 minutes of the game because they completely opened up the neutral zone. They just, it was a free highway for the Rangers to come from their defensive zone into the neutral zone with speed into the cap zone. And the Rangers are a super creative team offensively. They're young and they're fast, and once they get into the zone, they can make stuff happen and that was very, very prominent and put on display very loudly in this game. Now, as a solution, I point you to last game. The last game against the Devils, the Caps were in the Devils zone for the last two and a half minutes of the game. They weren't able to pull their goaltender at all. That's a prevent defense that this team needs to be playing. 
Play in your offensive zone to be defensive. Don't let that puck go the other way. Don't just give up the neutral zone and let the team walk into your zone because when you do, you give up four goals in a period. And not even just in a period, you give up four goals in less than 15 minutes. That is, uh, I don't understand why you would not just keep the pedal to the metal and keep your system rotating as you have been the whole game. Look at the shift chart for this game. I'm not gonna overlay it. I'm not gonna waste your time because sometimes it's a little hard to see on the screen, but go look at it sometime and look at the gaps in the shift with players like Daniel Sprong, Richard Ponick, and Jacob Vrana. Once the Caps get the lead, they have Peter LaViolette shortens his bench and starts double shifting his big guys, his top gunners. Why? If you are playing a great game and your system is working and you're rotating all four lines properly, why would you shorten your bench? Why not keep everything flowing as it has been and keep your system the same? Because obviously that's what's working. Uh, I'm talking like we lost, we didn't lose, we ended up winning, but uh, it, like, you're going to lose games if you keep giving up four goal leads. Everyone's waiting for it now. Once that three, four goal lead comes, when it's three, zero, four, zero, everyone in this Caps fan base, every single one of you, I don't care who you are, you're waiting for the comeback to start. They're just waiting for that goal to come because they know as soon as that goal comes, there is one, two, possibly even three goals coming right behind it. Oh, and I thought, I thought when Kuznetsov scores his goal, so Blackwell scores twice and it's a 2-4 game and here we go again, right? I thought when Kuznetsov scores his goal, which by the way, called the bird Selly, thank you, when he scores his goal, I'm thinking to myself, good, momentum swings back in the Caps' favor. They're going to be able to get right back to it and play their high-octane shutdown game of getting into the offensive zone. But no, the bench gets shortened, guys get double shifted, and it's a 1-4 prevent. Neutral zone is wide open, and look what happens. Look it, time and time again that we've seen in the past a month now. Go back and look at every single game the Caps have given up a three or four goal lead. You will see, I guarantee you, a prevent of one four or some form of that where the neutral zone is given up. The neutral zone is the key. If you don't clog up the neutral zone and you let your opposition come into your zone willy nilly, just completely open door invited in it's going to go in the back of your net and it's gonna happen multiple times. I know, I'm sorry. I started off this video very, very negative and it's just, when you see these things and they're repeated, it, it really uh, gets in my brain and it really aggravates me. But enough, enough of the negativity, let's, let's get back to the positive things, great things coming out of this game. Tom Wilson, ladies and gentlemen, Tom Wilson, who was suspended for seven games, comes back. We lose the next game after he comes back and there's some talk about, well, we're better without Tom Wilson apparently, no! No, and this is the reason why. Tom Wilson comes into this game throwing his weight around from the start. Huge hits in the first period. He gets two goals on the board, takes a couple penalties. When does he not take a couple penalties? But he let them know, I am here and you're gonna pay if you play that puck. Kuznetsov gets on the board and that's three goals in three games for him and so good to see him start producing again and so good to see the bird Sally. That's just, it's so much fun to watch. But whatever conversation, honest conversation, he and Peter Laviolette had a couple games ago, boy did that work. It's, this is the sign of a veteran coach who knows how to work with players. He is able to take them at individual instances not every player is the same. He knows how to talk to these guys and whatever he did, boy, did it work. And we can see a lot more from Kuznetsov in the next couple of games if this trend continues. And then of course, we can't go without talking about Ovechkin getting on the board again. And for the running tally, that is 724. He is closing in on that number five. That is now, what, that's 10 and 10? No, I think it was already 10. And I think it's 11 goals in 11 games now, if I'm not mistaken. I'll double check on that. This goal is funny because this goal isn't even a shot on net. He's looking to pass that puck and you will never convince me otherwise. He's looking to pass the puck across ice up to the defense, it looks like. And it just deflects off a stick and goes in. Kincaid didn't know what happened. And of course, Ovi does his, you know, kiss fist pump celebration that he always does. Like, yeah, I meant to do that, but you ain't fooling anyone, Ovi. But guess what? That happens. There's some guys who have played in the National Hockey League, their only goals that they've ever scored in the league are off weird deflections like that, so we take those. Whether it's an awkward deflection off a stick, whether it's a one-timer from the left office, or whether it's sliding on your back and just hooking it and praying that it goes in, 
they all count the same at the end of the day. Shots for the game ended 22 to 20 in favor of the Caps, but it does not tell the full story of this game. Nine of those shots for the Rangers came in the third period alone and specifically came in the second half of the third period alone. And that's not good. Almost half the shots of the entire game for the Rangers come in like a 10 to 12 minute span. The, the Rangers went 10 whole minutes in the second period with no shot on net and that included a power play. Face-off percentages turned out well, 55-45 for the Caps. It's almost even, but the Caps just eke out the wind. And what do we always say? If you win face-offs, you're gonna win hockey games. Hits were huge in this game, 36 to 21 in favor of the Caps. And we always know when the Caps are playing huge, hitting big physical games, they always tend to do well. Okay, that's not always true. Sometimes uh, Caps get a little too caught up in the physical game. Sometimes they overcommit to hits, in my opinion, and it leads to transitions the other way. And because you've overcommitted to the hit, you're not able to get back in time, and it, it kind of leads to odd man rushes. And so, but most of the time, most of the time when the Caps play a big physical game, it's going to go in their favor. The Rangers were able to score once on their four power plays, and that, that was a really good deflection, by the way. I think Sam Sonoff is thinking Kreider is going to go cross crease when that puck comes down low to him, but instead he just deflects it on net. That was a sick deflection. It, that is not easy to do, so props to him. And the Caps were not able to score on their three chances, and that's becoming a little bit of a concern to me. Especially at home, the Caps are usually fire on the power play at home. They're usually massive, but it's been about a week or two now where the Caps just haven't been producing on the power play. Something's gotta change. I think everything is too static. They don't move around enough. The 131 that everyone knows and everyone has seen for a decade now is just stale. Things have to change. I really love the interchange with uh, Carlson and Ovi. When, when Carlson goes over the left circle and Ovi comes up to the point, I like that. I like seeing that because it really throws off defenses. Defenses are so married to the concept of hugging Ovechkin on that left circle that when he's not on the left circle, either he comes up to the point and interchanges with Carlson or when he goes down low towards the crease, they don't know what to do. They get all in a tivy and they get all scrambling. Guess what? A lot of times that leads towards goals. Goals from the other side where uh, Backstrom's on the half wall or Kuznetsov's on the half wall or even Vrana down the line. It leads to chances. We need to see more movement on the power play and that's going to lead to more chances. Next up, the Caps have the Rangers again, this time in New York at MSG. It's the second half, the back half of a home and home. And nothing needs to change in my opinion. Well, the only thing that needs to change is the mentality of the Caps in the second half of the third period, late in the game, when you have a lead, the, a complete mental overhaul of how this team needs to play. Don't shorten your bench, Peter. Just, just give it a try for a game or two. Just try keeping your lines rolling. There, there's a time to bench a player or to shorten your bench when guys aren't being responsible or they're not putting effort into the play. We've seen that from Vrana and Kuznetsov this season. But right now, I think everyone's buying into the system very, very well. Everyone has picked up on what PL is trying to teach them and they're running with it. And we're seeing that we're seeing really good hockey for majority of the games, but just change that mentality a little bit. Let your lines roll for the entire game and see what happens. Don't bench your guys like Ponick and Sprong and Vrana, guys who are fast and aggressive and sometimes really hard on the puck. Ponick lays some great hits last game. Let those guys stay out there, let the team roll and play that shut down high octane offense that doesn't open up the neutral zone and that just pins the Rangers into their own zone. Just don't even give them a chance on our net. But what do I know? I'm just a fan. Hey, if you like this video, smash that thumbs up button for me. It goes a long way towards helping the channel. And if you enjoyed your time here, consider subscribing to the channel. I'd love to see you come back. And as always, let's go Caps!